Hey, Sandy, what do you got there? Oh, oh, hi, Joel. Um, just a few things. Um, I was reading today's Bible story uh, from Exodus about how the many plagues that God sent to Egypt, oh, they were like disasters. Yeah. I was wondering about the ninth plague, okay. which was darkness. What okay. would have been like to have been in, to have been in total darkness for three days? Oof. You oh. know, God made it so that there was nothing that could give the Egyptians any light, but the Israelites had light. Yeah. The Bible says God made it so dark that the Egyptians could feel the Oof, darkness. That's crazy. So I wondered what it would be like to do some simple tasks in the dark. Do you uh, want to try some of these things? Might be fun. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I guess we're going to be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Okay. Do a blindfold because it's kind of like being in the dark, right? Okay. Think you can handle some Ooh, of these? It, it is dark in here. Sandy, where did you go? <laughs> I'm over it here. It is dark. Okay, I'm giving you this pen, this marker, and see if you can write your name. Um, is, which side is the... Uh, uh you have to figure it out. <laughs> okay, right, here you it. go. All right, see my name is J... Name. See what, how he does. O... E... L. Whoa, Joel. whoa, guys, what do you think? Not bad is it good? at is it good? all. It's excellent, okay. excellent. Okay, leave good. your blindfold on. Yeah. Here's a Band-Aid. See okay. if you can put it on your left... Elbow. My left elbow. All right, gotta get this wrapping off. Okay. Oh, it's hard to get that wrapping off. Oh. All right. Okay. Oh, I think I have the band aid in my hand. Now I gotta get these flappy tabby things okay. off. Okay. Yep. Flappy tabby. Got that. And then, bam. Good job. You yeah. did it. Okay, last and, one. Well, here you go. You can reuse oh, that. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Give it a cut. Okay, this, see if you can tie a bow with there. All right. With that. I am a master bow tire. Oh, it's got lots of little girls. Oh, he did it! Good job! Take off your blindfold. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. See, awesome. told you. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, Perfect. wow. Well, last week we learned that God told Moses to tell Pharaoh, who was keeping the Israelites as slaves, to let his people go. Today we're going to learn that God sent plagues to Egypt, which are kind of like disasters, right. when Pharaoh refused to let God's people go. We'll see how God was Israelites' deliverer. Join us for D6 at FCCO. Today our lesson is from Exodus 7 through 12. God had a special purpose for Moses' life. From saving him as a baby in a basket to using the burning bush to get his attention, God's plan for Moses was to deliver the people of Israel. Moses and his brother Aaron went to Pharaoh and asked him to let God's people go. And just as God said, Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he refused to let them go. So God sent plagues on Pharaoh and the Egyptians. For the first plague, God turned all the water to blood. Mm. This Ugh. included water in the river, causing the fish to Ugh. die in the river to stink. Ugh. It also included water Ugh. in ponds, pools, and people's houses. That's disgusting. I don't do well with blood. Uh, people looked everywhere for fresh water, but it was all blood. This plague, Sandy, it lasted for seven days. Seven days. Seven mm -hmm. days of bloody water. Not even bloody water. It was just blood. Yeah, right, Ugh. right. Ugh. Now, for the second plague, God filled the land of Egypt with frogs from the rivers to the palace. Uh, uh, Everywhere. Wow, yeah. Now they're, you know, do you think about it? They're probably in their beds, I'm hop, sure. hopping in their food probably. everywhere, probably in their clothes. Yeah, I'm everywhere. I mean, like, Pharaoh begged Moses and Aaron to have God take them away, and God did, but Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go. For the third plague, God to <sighs> told Moses to have Aaron hit the ground with his rod and dust would turn into a swarm of small biting bugs. Uh, 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 everywhere. Uh, everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bugs everywhere. The uh, entire land was infested with these bugs, uh, covering the people and the animals. But Pharaoh uh, still said no. Oh, gosh. Then God sent swarms of flies to cover Egypt uh, to, for the fourth plague. Pharaoh told Moses that the Israelites could worship God, but only in his land. The flies are everywhere. Yeah, they are. And when Mo Moses refused this offer uh, from Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh said the Israelites could leave, but they could not go far. But when, when God got rid of the lies, uh, Pharaoh changed his mind. Oh, man. So God sent a fifth plague. For the fifth plague, it involved the death of all the livestock. The animals they used for working and eating. Animals were dead. 
Only the animals of the Egyptians died, but Pharaoh still refused to let God's people go. Wow. Oh, poor animals. animals. This is what happened for the sixth plague. God told Moses to take ashes and throw them in the air while Pharaoh was watching. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> when Moses threw the ashes, boils broke out on all the people uh, and animals. Uh, Do you know what a boil is? It, oh, yeah, it's nasty sore that causes horrible pain. Oh, I can just feel it. It's all infected and gross. All over oh, the place. Ah. Pharaoh probably. Oh, oh, I bet Pharaoh just thinking about it. Gets me, oh. Yeah. Oh, Painful. Well, Pharaoh probably allowed the Israelites to go after that, I would nope, think. No, nope. no, he still refused. Now, the seventh plague was hail. God warned the people about the hailstones and told them to take shelter. Is this a hailstone? The, I what mean, do you think? hailstones are balls of ice, right? They're balls of ice. That come out of the sky. Yes, but these weren't little balls of ice. They must have been at least the size of a baseball. Oh, okay. Or even larger because the next day the hailstorm destroyed the oh. plants and trees. Animals and people who ignored God's warning died. Yeah, you ever been hit with a baseball? Uh, they hurt. Tough, tough. Yeah. So let me guess, after that, Pharaoh said, okay, there's a bunch of hail, there's been all the other plagues, but uh, they can go now, right? Once um, the plague was gone, right? Is that what happened? Uh, well, no. um, unfortunately, he kind of said that, but then he changed his mind. He changed his mind. Oh, this is just getting ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, you'd think that Pharaoh would be like a little smarter than he was since, you know, crops have been destroyed, animals died, people suffered disease, or he hadn't had water to drink for seven days when the river was blood. I, I know, mean, I know, I know. Even Pharaoh's officials were begging him to let the Israelites leave, but he refused. So God sent an eighth plague. God had Moses lift his rod again. Yeah. Lift his rod. When Moses did this, God caused a wind to blow all day and all night. And the next day, locusts had been blown in. They were everywhere. They're kind of like grasshoppers. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, They're insects that can destroy fruit, plants, trees, crops by eating them. Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said that Israelites could leave. God sent another wind to drive the locusts into the Red Sea. And what do you think happened then? Well, I'm sensing a trend in Pharaoh's decision, so I'm guessing he changed his mind. <laughs> That's right. And that is when God sent the ninth plague of complete darkness, like we talked about before, on the Egyptians. Only the part of the land where the Israelites lived had any kind of uh, light. Once again, Pharaoh said that Israelites could go, but they must leave their animals. But Moses said they had to take the animals with them because they would need them for sacrifices. Pharaoh became so angry, he said, not only could the Israelites not leave, but also if Moses came back, he would kill him. Wow. Before the last plague, God gave instructions to the Israelites. He told them to make an animal sacrifice using a one-year-old male sheep or goat with no defects. They were to put some blood of the animal on the sides and top of the door frame of their houses. The tenth and final plague was the death of every firstborn. <sighs> but when God saw the blood on the Israelites' door frames, he would pass over their homes and their firstborn would live. Also that same night, the Israelites were to roast the meat from their sacrifice and eat it along with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They were to be dressed and ready to leave, even while they ate. At midnight, the firstborn in every Egyptian family died from Pharaoh's son to the servants. Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and told them to leave and take everyone and everything with them. Oh my goodness. God's deliverance had finally come. The Israelites had been in Egypt for 430 years, and they were now free. They were leaving for the land of Canaan, which had been promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God wanted the Israelites to remember how he delivered them out of Egypt, and how he passed over the houses during the plague of the firstborns dying. So every year, they were to have a celebration called Passover. Several weeks ago, we learned that Jesus celebrated the feast of the Passover before he washed his disciples' feet. The first Passover lamb was a symbol that pointed to the ultimate Passover sacrifice, Jesus Christ. God wants us to remember our deliverance that came only through Jesus and his death on the cross and his powerful resurrection. The same God who delivered the Israelites is the God who delivers us from sin. God sent his son Jesus to be our deliverer, 
His death on a cross paid our punishment for sin so that we could have those sins forgiven. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you do keep your promises. We thank you that you are our great deliverer. And we thank you for um, the example of you delivering the Israelites. Lord, as we um, think of that uh, Passover feast, we think of uh, what you've done for us. Jesus, uh, your death on the cross for us. You were the ultimate sacrifice. We thank you that you did that so that our sins could be forgiven. We love you. We love you for doing that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll see you next week for D6 at FCCO.